The soul, which is not visible, drives the human body that is tangible. Welcome to another episode. We're still on Lagos Life of Friday, January 26, 1990. We're on page 10. Uh, I don't think there's any need to show the cover pages again. So those who have missed this can go to uh, previous pages, uh, episodes, sorry. Uh, we have here, I showed it last, women in the feast of blood. Women in the feast of blood. Then under it, we have man in call girls palaver. Mm -hmm. In Africa, some call them uh, ashawu. Some call them tutu. They have other various names. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> let's go to the first story. Women in the Feast of Blood. Who is the writer? Oh, the writer. The writer is not there. I don't think there is any writer for it. Mm -hmm. But it is here, true life story. Mm -hmm. You can see it, true life story. But I can't find any writer for it. It's not there. It's conspicuously missing, absent. <clears throat> Women in the first in oh, sorry. Women in the feast of blood. At about eleven p.m., everybody in the house except John and his mother was already in the church praying to God to grant them his mercies in the incoming year. It was New Year Eve. Okay, that was the previous month, December. It was New Year Eve. John on the party, John on his party was busy gulping assorted beer and listening to sentimental music in his house. He capped it with two beautiful ladies on the left and right. Uh -huh. John was half drunk and so felt drowsy. Mm. His lady visitors decided to leave in order to allow him to take some rest. John, full stop, John saw them to the door and came back to his beer. Kula, his half-brother, who owned the musical gadgets, had surprisingly gone to church, leaving John in great bewilderment as to what could have changed him to a church goer at the last day of the year. John began to doze again. Suddenly, he had a shock which made him shrek. Which made him shrek, yes. Full stop. Uh, he felt that somebody was holding his throat. Full stop. It made him gasp. Full stop. Instantly, he opened his eyes wide as he sleep had forcefully vermous. Vermous. Vermous is here spelled V E R M O O S E D. Okay, Namshi. Still, he sensed that a sharp knife was running through his abdomen and slicing it while it seemed as if while it seemed as if another person was cutting his kidney into pieces. He then withdrew himself from the chair on which he sat and reclined on the vacant bed beside him. It did not help matters as he fiercely resisted the invisible destroyers. He realized uh, it did not help matters, full stop. As he fiercely, sorry, as he fiercely resisted the invisible destroyers, 
he realized they might likely be working against a specific time. Paragraph. He now sensed that a, a dagger was piercing his heart. He made an attempt to thwart this, but to no avail. He could not subdue the spirits. Full stop. He became helpless. He was tired because the spiritual battle he was facing was being transmitted to physical. Full stop. Blood stains could be seen in the nose and stomach. He could not bear the pains again. Indelible damage had been done. Sorry, indelible da da damage had been unleashed on him. It was almost midnight when John breathed his last, his last full stop. What a sad end. Then this next is death. A solidarity death. Okay. Uh, then death that sneaks in when nobody was around. Death is a coward. He could not show his face to allow John challenge him to a to a duel. To a duel. Sorry. Duel. D U E L. It was tragic and mysterious that John died the, the way he did. However, he killed himself. He was forewarned. He should have been, he should have been forearmed by taking necessary precautions. He should have followed others when they were going to church. Though he bought a prominent religious name, John never exercised restraints in the world, in the wilderness, in the worldliness. This was the undoing. This was his undoing, I'm sorry. This, this was his undoing. His eldest brother, who was a pastor, had always advised him to change from his bad ways and lead a good life. John's reply had always been, don't worry, when I am old, I will do your wish. Kola, his half-brother, was worse, but he turned a new leaf just the day John died. Okay, we fear death a lot. Hmm? Uh, that, that fateful day, the pastor brother of John had asked him and Kola, and Kola to follow him to church, being the last day of the year. At least that would, that, at least that would accord them the opportunity to give thanks to God and sparing their lives in the, in the outcoming year, in the outgoing year. I'm sorry, is it outgoing? Okay, in the outgoing year. After much persuasion, Kola agreed to go, but John refused. Everybody went normal. Everybody went normally during, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Everything, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, viewers. Uh -huh. Everything went normally during service until a member of the congregation started prophesying. Prophesying. Until a member of the congregation started prophesying. Nobody should go home that night because evil loomed at the corner of a member's house. Paragraph. Definitely, somebody like Kola who reluctantly attended the church would blame himself for attending. Moreover, when he had not gone to pray 
but to please his moreover when he had not gone to to plea to pray moreover when he had not gone to pray but to please his brother who had been worrying him for years moreover scolard was it was not his intention to pray to go to church to pray who had been pleasing him for years who had been worrying him for years i'm sorry who had been worrying him for years now he would miss all the celebrations welcoming the new year in the town this made him this made him his endlessly this made him his endlessly he spelled h i s s this made him his endlessly his eyes were up and red he got offended at the latest mistake of anybody near him kola was just like a masquerad in the church an odd figure but an awful operation was going on in kola's house that time john's watch don't john's witch mother had asked her colleagues to come for kola that night because she knew kola would be at home she had described where he normally slept for them as revealed john's mother had partaken of the meat of past victim a past victim donated by her colleagues and it was her turn to donate somebody to carry on with the story carry on with the story precisely at the appointed time the witches were around to ask to execute their diabolical plan they besieged kola's room but got no but got but got no hint at his whereabouts every room was searched but none could produce kola the witches asked john's mother who it was that was sleeping and she quickly told them that it was john her own son mm-hmm. and of course her only child there was no option for the witches the the banquet sorry their banquet must hold they must eat and drink that night oh the place is getting done they must eat and drink that night that must they must devour human flesh in fact viewers bear with me this is where we've gotten to we've got to go to uh read they must devour human flesh blood must be on that after such uh, i can't fix my words there it's not possible let's keep everything there and then uh, go to mother acquired that john mother acquired that john should be taken no it's not acquired M- mother acquired mother acquired that john should be taken uh i think after some deliberation the mother had no choice but to give out his her only child to be sacrificed so that his colleagues would enjoy it. Mm-hmm. so that's where we reach uh mother acquired that john should be taken good stuff so at 11:30 pm he was pounced upon and consumed when they had finished eating everywhere remained silent only the tick tock sound of the wall clock in john's room could be heard as its seconds ticked towards 12:00 midnight that's the end of the story 
story. Let's go to uh-huh, let's go to the other story. Man in call girl sucks palava. Oh, that one too is badly torn. But let's see. And the paper is again is wrinkled. There's wrinkles. There's a line in the middle there. Let's see what we can do. Hmm? Uh, man in call girl's palava. And there is here. Do not, do not see. I told you. That's by the story here. Where my finger? Where my uh, four finger is? Do not see. I told you. And, uh, can see it. Um, a factory supervisor with the manufacturing company at Urigu could not withstand the jeers of his colleagues when his call girlfriend from a hotel at Ojota called at his place of work. Full stop. The girl calls Guslo, in inverted commas, and brought out, um, sorry, and brought work to a stand still for about 10 minutes when she rough handled him because he did not pay for a sexual intercourse with her. Oh yeah. I said this. This things used to happen a lot in those days. Now I don't know I'm aged. Maybe it's, I believe it's still happening. Hmm? Or oh, the girls are watching now. He did not pay her for sexual for intercourse with him. Uh, that's from, uh, I remember in Lagos sometime around midnight, a girl came out, a girl came out, walking in the streets, stuck naked, nothing on, shouting, give me my money, give me my money, give me my money, give me my money. Then somebody slept with her and then ran away and put on the tiny paint her. Naked. I looked through the window and saw in the night. Naked. Give me my money. Give me. Oh, God. Okay. Let's continue. For a sexual intercourse with her. According to our source, the man, Mr. E, Mr. E, a supervisor, the name has been uh, shielded, eh? Mr. E, a supervisor, deceived the, deceived the call girl, Miss P, when he took her to bed last weekend and ran, all, and ran off to work the following morning without fulfilling his financial obligations to the girl for the services rendered. Look at that. You know this is what they also do. Some of them have children. You go for them, you get something, you walk away. Obligation uh, to the girl for the services rendered. Miss P, who managed to know the working place of Mr. A, went there to deal with him. Full paragraph. For those who cared to listen, Miss P narrated how it all started. She said Mr. A picked her up for sex at an agreed fee of 30 naira. She said Mr. A, however, reneged on his promise the following morning when he sneaked out of the room after he had told her he was going to the toilet. <laughs> Told her I was going to the toilet. Mm. Okay. Uh, the girl wasn't watchful. You should have watched what he and what he was wearing, you know, whether there was evidence that he was going to come back. Mm. Okay. He went away through the back door that leads to the main road. She said she waited for about 30 minutes without him showing up. It then dawned on her that she had been taken for a ride. Miss P then decided to check on Mr. A's on Mr. A at his place of work. And luckily for her, she met him operating a machine. Uh-huh. After operating on her, he's now going to get power to operate on a machine. Hmm? Without wasting time, 
she got hold of him in order to collect her money. Paragraph N of uh, next line. It took the intervention of the most senior officer on duty who pleaded with, with who pleaded with and said who pleaded with and paid Miss P before the matter could be resolved. And when the matter reached the management, they gave Mr. A a warning letter against future occurrence. He was lucky. <laughs> he was lucky. Only, only a warning letter. Hmm? Maybe they realized that uh, they were all men and anything could have happened if John didn't go there. Hmm? Okay. It was too hot. A uh, uh, warning letter against future occurrence. Lagos we can gather that Mr. A, who is now sober, had sworn never to patronize call girls again. He lied. He lied bad. He go go. <laughs> what pushed him in the first place will push him there again. Hmm? Oh my God. <laughs> I think that's the end of the story. Yes, I think that's the end of the story. The other story we read already from page, uh, in we, we, we completed from page one. Hmm? I peace which is wizards. So yeah, so that was page one. We finished with the then recipe for books cassette. Yes, we finished it. So viewers, I think that is all we have for page ten. There are just two stories. The other stories are continued from page one, other pages. Hmm? Yes, that's all. We end it. Uh, I think all I have to do is, as usual, to thank my viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, today is an, it's been a, a short episode, and therefore I believe the blunder that I normally cause is uh, down today. It's not as much as usual. Uh, thank you very, very much, Ila Lekai. Bye-bye, and may God bless you.